Okay. Okay. Good evening, everybody. We are recording, Madam President. Uh, thank you, and, and good evening, and welcome. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our special Board of Education meeting. Today is August 31st. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, and one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The mission of the White Plains City School District is to educate inspire, and inspire all students while nurturing their dreams so they learn continually, think critically, pursue their aspirations, and contribute to a diverse and dynamic world. Next, we'll have any board announcement. Um, well, I'll wait for committee reports, I guess. No? Yeah. OK. Any, any other announcements? I'll just mention that I attended uh, the special education uh, coffee talks um, and that they were very well attended. Um, you know, lots and lots of people, lots of questions. The presentation, Debbie uh, Ogarten, uh, the presentation was very clear, um, very comprehensive. Questions were answered. Um, so they were really well done. So thank you. Thank you. And I'll just add, um, I'll just add that this morning was the, the new teacher orientation and I had opportunity uh, to participate. Um, Dr. Ricker and all the assistant superintendents, um, President Lyons, um, other administrators were there to welcome our new teachers. Um, I think it went as well as it could in, in this COVID er er era. Um, I was just happy, like, to see other people in the middle of the day. Um, <laughs> you, you really just realize how much you need that. So I, I feel like they're excited. And so I was um, happy to have the, the opportunity to participate. Is there anything else? I guess I'll just also mention um, the town hall that was put on by oh, a yes. mayor and uh, Mondaire Jones. Yeah. Um, you were there, I know Rosemary also, um, and, and Joe, um, and Kara, really great presentation, um, responses to questions. It was very informative and clearly extremely well received. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I concur. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you for that, um, President Lyons. So next we'll move into um, public participation. The public is invited to address the board and superintendent on any matter relating to the White Plains schools. Please limit your statement to three minutes. Please also respect the privacy and dignity of all individuals, whether students, faculty, administrators, or others. The administrators will be happy to address any school-related matters of a more personal nature. If you have uh, uh, public participation comments, please give us your name and your address. President Lyons, uh, President Kara McCormick Lyons has, I'm sorry, President Eller, <laughs> President Kara McCormick Lyons has her hand up. Oh, okay. Hi there. Hello. So my name is Kara McCormick Lyons. I'm speaking as president of the White Plains Teachers Association. Our address is 500 North Street. Um, so the association just wants to thank everyone for your vigilance regarding the health and safety matters that impact staff and students. We know that there are many ADA accommodation requests coming in, and we know this puts the district in a difficult position as it navigates the staff classrooms while still figuring out how to accommodate the medical needs of our colleagues. So the association asks that these decisions be compassionate, creative, and collaborative. I'd also like to take a moment to restate that it's the association's continued position that in the event of a positive COVID-19 case, the impacted building should close and switch to remote instruction for 14 days. I'd also like to speak on behalf of our members who will take childcare leaves, either in blocks or intermittently. Please know that these decisions are not made lightly. But the infrastructure for school-aged um, childcare doesn't exist and families really are scrambling. And finally, September 2nd 
is a national day of action to push the HEROES Act. So we ask you to join us on social media to promote awareness around that. Thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Will there be any uh, more public participation? Uh, yes. Good evening. My name is Franklin Cromer. I'm a third grade teacher at Post Road School. Uh, currently on the way home from physical therapy, pull, therapy, pulled over at a stop to talk. Uh, I have a question I wanted to ask. Um, how was the decision arrived at to uh, not offer the teachers remote learning, uh, remote teaching, excuse me? Um, I, I'm very curious about that because the students were offered the, uh, the chance to stay home. Um, we're meeting right now, you know, remotely because of the danger, but uh, we're expected to go into the classroom um, in two days. And I'm very curious about how the decision was made not to offer teachers the choice of teaching face-to-face -face or remotely, especially since we all worked remotely for the second half of the last school year. Thank you. Um, Joe, do you want to, Dr. Rickler, do you want to um, respond to that or? Certainly. Well, Thank first, you. Mr. Cromer, it's really nice to see you. It's been a while and I hope you're doing It's well. nice to see all of you too. This is, you know, I'm, I, I just am curious. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a matter of life and death, especially to me. I have a lot of mitigating factors and um, I, I actually feel that it's a matter of life and death. And I feel caught between a rock and a hard place because I'm the, the breadwinner in the family. I can't take a year off without leave. Um, and I have these factors. My doctor told me, basically, if I get COVID, it's, it's a wrap. It's done. And um, I'm being forced back into the classroom against my wishes, as I said to Mr. Pepper, under duress, because uh, you're not offering you know, remote teaching for teachers. And I, I personally, as you can tell, I, I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's just, I don't think it's right. And I think it's actually unconscionable. And I, I want to know like how, how the district came to that decision. Like happy who to, made happy the to decision. Answer your question, Mr. Cromer. Absolutely. Happy to answer your question. Thank you for, for sharing your thoughts and, and um, your feelings in the matter. And, and certainly uh, I have to say, and, and you could guess that I would say this is uh, health and safety above all for, for, for everybody. So decisions, you know, in my, in, in my mind, I'm thinking about health and safety has to be first. Now that said, I think your question's a very fair one. Um, and all throughout the process related to uh, the planning for reopening of the facilities, what we intended to do and what we worked to do was to meet and in fact, in many cases, exceed the New York State Department of Health guidelines for health and safety with regard to children re-entering in a hybrid model, and certainly with regard to welcoming back our faculty and staff members. We did think about the possibility of whether or not staff members would be able to teach, in fact, teach their classes remotely um, in a hybrid model. And unfortunately, uh, because of the logistics, as you can imagine, having a faculty, full-time faculty member in, in a remote, remote setting while children are in their classroom, uh, poses a number of logistical concerns. We also recognize that for many individuals uh, in, in our family in White Plains, this decision to come back into the facilities is not an easy one. Um, we also know from, from meeting with thousands of, of our stakeholders in the community that parents and guardians um, also have, have needs. So as you know, and as you heard, the district, all districts throughout the state of New York are, are put in a position where we're trying to balance the needs of all of our parents, guardians, and children, as well as our faculty and staff members while holding constant health and safety. At the end of the conversation, we did not come to a place where it was determined that faculty members would be able to teach remotely and still maintain the schedule that we created for our children. We also know that, that for some faculty members and some staff members indeed, that that poses a diff uh, additional uh, and, and really, you know, in many instances, heartbreaking scenarios. Uh, Mrs. Lyons just talked about the lack of childcare um, for faculty and staff members, which again is, is a reality. Certainly health and safety concerns, uh, they're realities for, for many folks. 
what we're trying to do is provide all of the reasonable accommodations that we could. So for instance, um, if uh, an individual, an employee is cleared to be able to come to work by their healthcare provider, um, we have a number of steps that we can put in place to try and minimize and mitigate even further um, outside of, of the Department of Health guidelines and, and SED's guidelines for reentry um, to try and continue to support that process. But that's with the individual's healthcare provider saying that it's okay. Um, so when we come to these decisions, it's not sort of, um, you know, that, that we're just saying, no, uh, you, 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 can't, you can't teach from home. It's really about how it, will best, how it will best impact our children's experience in a hybrid model and, and allow us to be able to offer the highest quality educational experience moving forward. And I recognize, and I do appreciate you sharing your personal feelings, your personal situation. I recognize that for, for some folks, that's a real challenge. What I can tell you is Mr. Pepper, and I know he's, he's worked with you, um, he, he and I and everybody else will do what we can to support you while you're moving forward and making a decision. You know, it's not about coming back to school under duress. You have the ability to make a decision based on what you believe is going to be in the best interest of, of your, your, your personal situation. That said, we will do everything we possibly can to reasonably accommodate you and anybody else who has concerns about reentering the facilities. So uh, happy to talk with you more if, if, if you'd like, but uh, hopefully that answers your question. Um, it's it's an answer, and as you probably are aware, it's not one that I, that I particularly like, um, because what it does is it seems to put a, a dollar sign on my life. It seems to be like the district saying, well, you know, your life is not worth us putting a sub in the room while you teach remotely from an, another room in Post Road or another room in the district or from your home. So it seems to me like the district is putting a, t a price tag on my life when I submitted the papers for uh, working remotely from home and was told that the district's not offering that option to yeah. teachers. And then I requested a, 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 a leave as I had um, a year and a half ago when I had a surgery. Um, and Mr. Pepper stated, well, yeah, you have, you know, it's been long enough since then and, and you have enough sick days. Um, but uh, so, Mr. Cromer, if you don't mind, and I, and I don't mean, mean to be disrespectful, I just don't I, want you to share too much of your personal uh, situation. I, I, I hear what you're saying. This, this is, um, I'm, I'm very much aware that this is a public meeting. I'm very much aware that the public is able to view this and will be able to view it after w this meeting is done. Okay. I'm not sharing anything that I don't want to share. Believe, believe me on that. Sure. Um, but uh, but my but I point is to, that, I, that I, also, I, I need to make it, sure that we're very clear. The district isn't putting a price tag on its employees. What the district is attempting to do is reopen its facilities according to the health and safety guidelines of the New York Department of Health and the State Education Department. I understand that because of your personal situation, you feel differently. But the reality of the situation is what we're attempting to do is reopen our schools in the safest possible manner during a pandemic in a hybrid model where we're able to bring as many children into the facilities as possible. I absolutely understand and respect your position. And again, uh, you know, if we can work with you and, and, and try and support you um, moving forward, we're happy to do it. But it's not about dollars and cents. It's about reopening our facilities and being able to bring our children back in the safest manner possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate, thank yes, thank you. We, we appreciate you sharing. And um, thank you, Dr. Ricker, for that, that um, detailed answer. Thank yes, you. Will there be any yes. other public participation? Please forgive me for turning the camera off. I'm gonna resume my ride home at this time. Thank, thank you, you, please be safe. Thank you. For allowing me to participate. Thank you, we appreciate you. All thank right. you. Thank you, thank you. Next, um, next we'll move on to the superintendent's report, Dr. Ricker. Uh, thank you, President Ellen. Again, good evening, everybody. And thank you to the Board of Education for taking the time to have this special meeting this evening so we could um, finish up some of our, our last minute odds and ends of, of the summer. Of course, our next meeting is on the 14th of September. Um, as we move toward reopening, uh, just a, a, and President Eller mentioned it earlier, I do have to uh, once again thank uh, Mr. Pepper and Dr. Manning Campbell 
uh, and, and our colleagues in the Human Resources Department, as well as our colleagues at the buildings um, for really helping us to put together a, a great new teacher orientation program. Despite the challenges, uh, we were able to welcome our uh, newest members to our family uh, today and uh, tomorrow. And uh, that's, that's a great opportunity for folks to get into the buildings and to meet each other physically distanced um, and, and learn more about the White Plains City School District. Um, so thanks, uh, Scott, and thanks, Jackie, for that. We also had our administrative retreat last week. Again, opportunities not only to um, engage in professional development, but also to talk about the opening of the academic year. And I can tell you, um, our administrative team is looking forward uh, to supporting all of our faculty and staff members and welcoming our children back into the buildings. Uh, building meetings are taking place, and, and um, as Trustee Brady mentioned that as well, and, and uh, robust conversations are taking place at the buildings and will continue um, as we enter into the beginning of the academic year. I also want to uh, take some time, and I know she doesn't like when I do this, but to take some time to uh, highlight and thank Deb Algarten and her team for the hard work that they did with regard to our social and emotional learning reentry plan. Um, quite literally, you know, work that probably would have taken years uh, has been conducted in, in the span of weeks and months. Um, we have great resources available. So to, to all of our faculty, staff, and administrative colleagues and Deb who worked on that, thank you very much. Um, social and emotional learning is gonna be a really important component of welcoming our, our students and our faculty and staff members back into our facilities. Um, in terms of our welcome back, uh, we're, we're going to have that on Wednesday. And, uh, and, and we're looking forward to that. And we also, of course, have our superintendent's conference days coming up with a great deal of professional learning um, and readying opportunities for our faculty and staff members as we look toward the 10th for the official day, uh, first day for our children. Um, the reopening committee, I, I will thank them a million more times, but I have to thank them again for all of their hard work. Um, everybody on that committee has done an amazing job in bringing an organization the size of the White Plains City School District um, to where we are right now from where we were back on the 13th of March. Um, we are in a, a strong position to open, safe, smart, and supported. Um, as Kara Lyons mentioned earlier, we are going to take any potential um, case of COVID-19 very seriously, and we're going to act in a swift and conservative manner to make sure that we don't see, to the extent that we're able to prevent it, don't see a spike in COVID-19 within our facilities, and certainly we don't want to be part of a spike of COVID-19 in our community. So as we move forward, that'll continue to be um, our number one priority, health and safety and security for our children and our faculty and staff members. There was some conversation related to athletics uh, for those of you who follow, and section one, um, along with the other sections throughout the state, um, are, it will be meeting we are, we are waiting for guidance from the, the State Athletic um, Council, and we plan to, uh, section, this section plans to have a statement related to um, sports, uh, interscholastic athletics, hopefully by the close of business this Friday. Uh, many folks are looking toward uh, the 21st of September as a potential start date for sports, but as you've heard um, throughout the state, there's, there's some concern related to uh, beginning sports so so close to opening of school. Um, we also heard some concerns about that from our, uh, from our um, families. Um, some parents have reached out to me um, with similar concerns. Every component district in the section has the opportunity to weigh in on their uh, beliefs. And of course, that's not a, an isolated um, conversation. That's a conversation that includes superintendents, administrators, athletic directors, coaches, and the like. So more information will be coming, um, hopefully by the end of this week, related to interscholastic athletics. Uh, again, I, I wanna thank Kara uh, uh, for participating in Thursday's town hall meeting. I thought it was a very important conversation that highlighted a key, uh, in my mind, shortcoming uh, with regard to safely reopening public schools. Childcare is essential. It's essential for our parents and guardians and guess what? Our faculty and staff members in many instances are parents and guardians. Um, and the absence of, of childcare within communities all throughout the state of New York continues to put a strain on public school districts' abilities to operate in a manner that is going to be efficient and going to be best supporting its, the, the students in their communities. So we're gonna keep working with our community partners 
um, to, to try and be able to provide opportunities for our, our community members to look into. Uh, but we have to have a much larger conversation about childcare and what that's gonna look like for parents and guardians moving through this academic year. And so thanks, Kara, and certainly thanks to Senator Mayer um, and uh, Mr. Jones uh, for participating in that really important conversation. Um, in terms of, and, and, and again, you know, with regard to human resources, we are working very closely uh, with our faculty and staff members to try and provide every accommodation uh, that we can in a reasonable fashion. It is a heavy lift, as you can imagine, in a district our size, but I will say that the, the, the faculty and staff members who are coming to us are, are coming to us in a, in a place of, of trying to find the best pathway forward. Um, some, some folks have concerns related to um, health safety personally. Some folks have concerns related to health safety in their own households. Some folks have concerns related to childcare. It really runs the gamut. And uh, Scott Pepper and, and um, the folks in human resources have uh, been working closely with WPTA, with CSEA and ASA, and we'll continue to do that moving forward. We don't want anyone to feel like they're left out in the cold here. We know that folks are struggling. We know that they're doing the best that they can, and the district will do the best that they can as well. So I appreciate Kara's comments before um, because they we're all feeling that same strain, and I think we're all feeling um, you know, that, that same struggle to try and do everything we can to support all the folks in our community. Um, with regard to the, uh, the opening of school year, I think the message is, is really going to be a message of hope. It's going to be a message of hope and communication. Uh, it's going to be a message of love. It's going to be a message of commitment and perseverance. Um, I think our district over the last five and a half, almost six months now, has committed itself 100 um, percent to the process of attempting to reopen facilities in a, in a safe and secure manner to the best of our ability. Um, it's taken the work of hundreds and thousands of people, literally thousands of folks, providing input um, regularly to us, and, and we're appreciative for all of it. And as we step forward into September, um, I have to tell you, uh, I'm excited. I'm excited at the beginning, or for the beginning of another academic year. I'm excited to have our children back. I'm excited to, to work and support our community members and our faculty and staff members, even during this really challenging time. Um, we, we do have uh, all of the folks in, in, our, uh, in our ranks uh, to be able to move, move us forward. And um, I'm really, appreciate, really appreciative uh, for all of that hard work. And I also want to thank the board. Um, many, many hours devoted to uh, conversations that I don't think any of us would have ever thought we would be having um, in strategic planning sessions and planning sessions to moving forward. So thank you for all that time as well. Um, and, and as we are on the, the, the precipice of September, right, some tomorrow, September 1st, I am happy to let you know that the district's new calendar is coming thanks to the hard work of Michelle Schoenfeld. Um, another, another beautiful calendar, um, color, uh, great photos of our children, and on the cover, it's a salute to the class of 2020. Um, and certainly the class of 2020 will always hold a special place in our hearts. Um, so Michelle, thank you so much for another wonderful calendar. And uh, I know that folks have already been back beating down her door for copies, and, and that'll be coming shortly. And that concludes my update, Madam President. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Rosemary, you're on mute. Nope. <laughs> sorry, sorry. The calendar is coveted by every person that I know. Even, even um, retirees will try to ask me, do you think I can get a calendar because I have room to do everything I need to do on that? And they like keeping up with our school. So thank you, thank you. Just to echo Dr. Ricker's comments, Michelle. Thank you. Next. My um, piano teacher used to ask for a copy every year so that he knew <laughs> when his students were home. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing how it connects all the dots within the community. So thank you. I, I'll be over tomorrow, Michelle. I have a small list. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next we'll move to our summary action items. We have summary action items four, five, six, and seven. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. 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 Yeah. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next, we'll move to our individual um, our individual action items. Um, next, we have the recommended approval of the recognition of the resignation 
um, for the purpose of retirement of, of, of Eileen McGuire from the Maranick Avenue School. It will be effective January 31st, 21. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we Not have, really, we, but aye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we we have Eileen on the line and as she as you can see Eileen it's a we really hesitated approving this just so you know and as you hear but certainly we we're happy to have you at least until January and at that time and and we always do we wish you all the best Madam, 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 sorry, go ahead, oh go ahead Kane and I'll go yeah I just I just have to say Mike I had three kids two in MAS and one who left and they went through under uh, Eileen's uh, leadership. And I just have to say, she believes in you know connections with students first. She created an environment for my kids that they love going to school. Um, and I just wanted to share with you, I, I, I wanna ruin it, but I probably no one knows, but this, she can admit it now that she's retiring, but this is, this is her right here. Can you see <laughs> the tiger? The tiger <laughs> she has never been seen in the same room as the tiger. So I'm not <laughs> sure if anybody knows that, but. Uh, she could confess to it now if she'd like, but I just want to say thank you for the years of leadership that she had, she had at MAS for my kids. So thank you, Eileen. And I wanted to also thank Eileen. My kids were gone by, from MAS by the time you got there, but you, your stewardship was wonderful. What you created in the building was great. And I will miss seeing you at Roosters. We always bump into each other at Roosters, either for breakfast or for lunch, and we catch up with each other very quickly. And I really appreciate everything you've done for our kids. Yeah, I have to echo my kids also went to uh, of Americ Avenue and maybe now Eileen you'll call me by my first name. And, <laughs> <laughs> and Dr. Ricker, any comment? Yes, absolutely. Um, first of all, Ms. McGuire, thank you so much for all of the years of service uh, to the children of the White Plains City School District and also for your collegiality, um, your your ear uh, for folks who just needed to talk and, and also your willingness to always go the extra mile. I'll never forget that you uh, and Mr. Janowitz and, and everybody else at MAS uh, became the, the elementary school with the most school spirit out of all of like, the Lower Hudson. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. But, you know, that, that, that is just, yeah. uh, just one hallmark that goes to show that you put your heart and soul into MAS. Um, so thanks for that. While I don't think that I'll necessarily be successful, Eileen, please know that for the next six months, I will be working on you to rescind your retirement. <laughs> but I feel fortunate that, uh, that you're going to be with us and uh, seeing us through the first uh, almost half of the academic year. So Eileen, thanks so much for that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we'll move on to item eight. So may I have a motion to remove item eight from the agenda? The 8B, yep, thank you, thank you, 8B, the, um, may, okay, <laughs> sorry, yeah, yeah the, the motion to remove 8B, the revision of the proba proba probationary date for Emily Martinez, may I, may I have a motion? So moved. So moved. <laughs> Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I, um, uh, President Eller, just so, just for uh, everyone's edification, everything's fine uh, with, with Mr. Martinez. Um, we had initially hoped that he would be able to join us tomorrow, September 1st, but unfortunately, um, due to uh, a change up in Cornwall, as superintendent has asked that he hang um, in a little bit longer. So the board had originally approved Mr. Martinez to begin his role as principal at White Plains High School uh, beginning on September 22nd or sooner. Um, we are still hopeful that it's going to be the sooner, um, but uh, it, at this point in time, he's not able to come with us tomorrow, but everything is just fine. Thank you. Thank you. And, and we know he will be here by the 22nd. Yes. Yes, that was his contractual. Yeah. Um, so. And Dr. Manning Campbell will then be in temporarily to help usher the opening of, of the high school. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. 
Next, um, we have the recommended approval of the homeless liaison sign side letter between the White Plains District and the White Plains Teachers Association for the 2019 through 2020 school year. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 I abstain. Thank you, Jim. So next, um, we, we're at board discussion and um, are there any committee reports? I know, Charlie, you did um, have some board discussion. Yeah, I did. Actually, I could have did it early on because it's not a formal board committee. But anyway, I also wanted to echo Joe's comments about Deb Augarden and everyone who was on the social emotional learning committee, which I I made every meeting except for one, um, and I'm sorry I missed that one. The work was incredible. Uh, the sub subcommittees were broken out. We were in we were in separate rooms, you know, on our computer. Uh, the amount of work, the level of work, the level of concern for our staff, for our students was incredible, and um, and the things shared uh, the, the 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 concerns, the concerns about the pandemic, the concerns about delivering what's best for our kids, the concerns about the safety and how that we can support all of that, all of those diverse concerns. Um, Deb was amazing. Um, I was, my subcommittee leader was Mike Eaton and he was phenomenal. So I, I, I cannot um, tell you how comfortable I feel with what was generated as, as Joe Ricca says, Dr. Ricca said, in a short period of time, what was generated was really it was really amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing that, Charlie, as well. Any more, any more board committee reports? Audit and finance met just before this meeting, and I welcome Kane as our newest member of the committee. I tried to get him to be chairman. He did not accept. <laughs> <laughs> he actually declined. <laughs> did um, discuss um, the uh, calendar for the audit committee and what our plans are for the year. We also went over finance, and you'll be getting a summary of everything that we did tonight shortly. Thank you. Thank you. I miss finance, too. Any other committee reports? I'm sure we'll have them um, next, uh, next month as we get, get back into the swing of things. So if we don't have any other board committee reports, just wanted to thank everyone for joining us tonight. Um, and yes, I, you know, we do have to carry a feeling of hope um, into this new school year. And I, I do choose to be hopeful. And um, I'm sure or I'm feeling that, you know, things will work out. Health and safety will always be first. And when we do that, um, I think it, it can lead to the most uh, positive outcomes for our students and staff. And with that, if there's nothing else, may I have a motion to adjourn our meeting? So moved. So moved. Oh, thank you. You got it, Rose. <laughs> <laughs> and so who, who second? Second. Second. I like that, Kane. Mm -hmm. All in, any questions? <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And uh, we'll all be together pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.